Good morning. Today we are celebrating feast of Saint Elizabeth of Hungary. And she married a king of Scotland. Though she was queen of Scotland, she was she she liked to live a very normal and simple life. She had eight children and always willing to help people who are in need, feeding the hungry, and trying to help to take the faith to different places, trying to end paganism in that country. As we celebrate such a saint, let's ask her to intercede for, for us that our own faith might be strong in Jesus our Savior. And now we shall begin our Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Let's ask God to forgive our sins and make us worthy to celebrate this Eucharist. I confess to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, by whose gift Saint Elizabeth of Hungary recognized and revered Christ in the poor, grant through her intercessions that we may serve with unfailing charity the needy and those afflicted through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the beginning of the book of Revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show his servants what must happen soon. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who gives witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ by reporting what he saw. Blessed is the one who reads aloud, and blessed are those who listen to this prophetic message and heed what is written in it, for the appointed time is near. John, to the seven churches in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne. I heard the Lord saying to me, to the angel of the church in Ephesus, write this. The one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks in the midst of the seven gold lampstands says this, I know your works, your labor, your endurance, and that you cannot tolerate the wicked. You have tested those who call themselves apostles, but are not, and discovered that they were imposters. Moreover, if you have endurance and have suffered for my name, and you have, got, and you have not grown weary, Yet I hold this against you. You have lost the love you had at first. Realize how far you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. Otherwise, I will come to you 
and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. The word of the Lord. Those who are victorious, I will feed from the tree of life. Those who are victorious, I will feed from the tree of life. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Those who are victorious I will feed from the tree of life. He is like a tree planted near running water, that yields its fruit in due season, and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Those who are victorious I will feed from the tree of life. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Those who are victorious, I will feed from the tree of life. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. And hearing a crowd going by, he inquired what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He shouted, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. The people walking in front rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Then Jesus stopped and ordered that he be brought to him. And when he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He replied, Lord, please let me see. Jesus told him, Have sight, your faith has saved you. He immediately received his sight and followed him, giving glory to God. When they saw this, all the people gave praise to God. The Gospel of the Lord. There was an elderly person who always had positive attitude. No matter what happens, all the problems, challenges, sometimes sick, he always smiled. He always had a good attitude. And his grandson observed this and asked, Grandpa, how is that you're always happy, even in tribulations, even in troubles and difficulties? He said, my son, I'm not disappointed because when disappointment comes, I change one letter in that word. Instead of D, I put H. Now it becomes his appointment, not disappointment. When problem comes, when I'm sick, when I have difficulty, I always think that is his appointment. I'm not disappointed. The moment I think that is his appointment, I feel so energetic. I feel that God is with me. I feel that God is giving me the strength. So why should I be disappointed? 
our two dear brothers and sisters, if something happens, let's not be disappointed. We should have the attitude that is his appointment and we will have the strength. Probably that's what in today's gospel reading the beggar had. He had every reason to be disappointed. <coughs> Blindness those days was considered to be a punishment from God for the sins. He had to carry that all his life. And probably he didn't have a family to help him. He's on the road begging for his livelihood. When he heard that Jesus was going, he started shouting, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And people around said, keep quiet, don't shout. He had all the reasons to be disappointed, but he was not. He kept trusting in Jesus and shouted all the more, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And he received his sight because he trusted in Jesus and he was not self-pitying or disappointed for his situations. Rather, he looked up to Jesus who can cure him. Today, as, as we celebrate this Holy Mass, let's ask Jesus to help us to see that God is there always in our life, especially in our difficulties. We shall all stand and pray for our needs. <clears throat> that the works of the whole world, worldwide church may prosper under the spirit of truth who guides her, we pray to the Lord that local, national, and world leaders may lead by gospel values. We pray to the Lord. Lord that those who suffer from addiction may be blessed with Christ's peace and with assistance in their need. We pray to the Lord. Lord that we, as a community of faith, may continue to be transformed in love and faith by the sacraments of the church. We pray to the Lord that those who have died may rejoice in God's eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord and for what else shall we pray now? Let us pray. All-knowing and ever-living God, hear the prayers we place before you this day and answer them in your goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. To humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord our God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice on yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of your people, and grant that we who celebrate your son's work of boundless charity may by the example of blessed Margaret be confirmed in love of you and of our neighbor. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us pure signs of your love that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, their great example lead us courage, their fervent praise sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim, Holy. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs of eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let's pray for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father. Uh, 
thy will be done on our earth it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass and lead us not. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of Jesus Christ be with you always. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, so shall be saved.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant we pray, O Lord, that we who are renewed by these sacred mysteries may follow the example of Blessed Margaret, who honored you with tireless devotion and by surpassing charity was a service to your people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ascended. We shall go in peace. Be Pray to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of Heavenly Host. All who will spread it, who is all about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.